Hello, and welcome to the Daily Devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Kirstein. Our text for today comes from the Epistle for the 13th Sunday after Trinity, Galatians chapter 3, verses 15 through 22. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul begins by giving us a human example, something that is familiar to us, something that we can understand. No one changes a man-made covenant. In his sermon on Sunday, Pastor Poppy used the example of a last will and testament. A will is binding. People respect it. You can't just tear it up and rewrite it if you don't like what it says. Paul's point here is to say, how much more certain are we that God will not change his covenant with us, his covenant of the promise of a savior? Even if the law shows up 430 years afterward, the law does not change the promise. It can't. In verse 19, Paul explains that the law was added because of transgression in order to curb sin. Then he says something a little more confusing. It was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now just what exactly is Paul talking about here? He tells us that the law was put in place through angels. Compare this then to the gospel which was brought to us by God himself in the flesh. The law came to man through an intermediary, Moses. The gospel has come to us by an even better intermediary, Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ is the better mediator of a better testament. Moses prepared the children of Israel to receive the law of God he had them wash themselves and lead holy lives for the days leading up to the giving of the law. Moses led them out of their tents to the base of the mountain, ready to receive the holy and perfect law of God. And what did they do? They ran away in complete terror and fear. Moses was not the better intermediator. Paul is saying in this text, how can the law justify or save you when God's own people, who prepared themselves for days through holy living and ceremonial washings to receive the law, ran away in complete fear and terror at the very voice of God? If the law could save them, then they would love the law. They could not even hear the law much less follow and obey it. 
So is the law contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. Christ is the better mediator of the better testament. Moses could not save the people from the full force of the law. He could not even stand in front of the people without wearing a veil to hide from the people the glory of God, lest they turn and run away again in fear and terror. Christ is the better mediator. He himself has taken on the full force of the law for you. Only he was able to bear it. Christ has come between God and man and satisfied the wrath of God. He did so by his death and resurrection. The law has its place, but this place is not to save us. The law shows us our sins, shows us our need for a savior and how to love our neighbor. But these things do not save us. Only Jesus saves us. The scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Thanks be to God. Amen.